Hello and welcome to the fifth mini lecture on the scientific procedure. My name is Martin Hughes and this week we're going to be talking about data analysis. Last week we looked at data, uh, extracting our own data through the virtual hides that we have on our YouTube channel. So hopefully you've had a look at that and extracted some of your own data. Um, but we've not actually talked about analysis for our data. So we talked about analysis as something that you should consider before you go out and collect all your data and we'd really encourage you to do that um, so you understand how you're going to actually uh, analyze the data when you've collected it and how you're going to use that to answer your hypotheses or test your hypotheses. So today we're going to talk about analysis. We're still going to be talking about the bird species using the bird feeders and um, the example on the YouTube videos but for this week we just want to introduce you to descriptive statistics and how we can calculate these statistics and then we'll apply them hopefully to the data that you've already extracted from the virtual heights. So the following information uh, was created by Dr. John Rafferty from Charles Sturt University. So thank you, John, for letting us use this material. And this is a great way to introduce you to descriptive statistics and talk about the, the sort of mathematics involved behind some of these stats. Um, so thank you again, John. So what are descriptive statistics? Descriptive statistics are used to describe the basic features of the data in a study. They provide simple summaries about the sample and the measures. Together with simple graphic analysis, they form the basis of virtually every quantitative analysis of data. So I think the keywords there is simple and we're looking at simple summaries. We're not doing anything too complicated. Hopefully this will be fairly intuitive and you'll be able to follow it. And you probably have done some of these statistics in the past and not really realized that they were actually this, uh, statistics. So what are we talking about? Well, the main thing that we're gonna look at is the central tendency. So that sounds kind of complicated, but it's not. Measures of central tendency look for averages within a set of data. In descriptive statistics, measures of central tendency include the mean, median, and mode. So you might be familiar with these terms already. So what do we mean when we say mean? <laughs> Find the mean of a data set. Well, the mean of a data set is arithmetic arithmetic average. Okay, so it's the average of all that data, which means it is the best measure of the central tendency because it precisely calculates the middle numerical value of the data. You need to add up all the numbers in a data set, then divide by the total number of variables in your data set. So we've probably all done this before. We've calculated the mean, or we often call it the average. So we have this example here. So we have a data set, P1 to P9, and we have the variables on the right-hand side column, 3, 45, 8, 23, 25, 25, 6, 8, and 33. So how do we calculate the mean? Fairly easily, we add up all the variables on the right-hand side, the right-hand column, 3 plus 45 plus 8 plus 23, so on and so forth gives us 176. We then divide by the total number of the variables in the data set. There's nine variables. 176 divided by nine equals 19.556. And that's the mean of our data, or the average of our data is 19.556. Okay, cool. The median then is the number in the middle of the data set when it is arranged in ascending order. So we'd have to rearrange the data starting at 3, then 6, 8, 8, 23, 25. So we'd have to put it in ascending order. And then we locate in the middle of the data set, since we have nine numbers, the fifth, numbers, the fifth number is right in the middle of the data set. Therefore, if we count along 5, we have 3, 6, 8, 8, 23. So 23 is the median. And that doesn't really tell as much, so we might not come across that too often, but it's important to understand how we calculate that. Now we have the mode, the mode of a data set. The mode is the number that appears the most in the data. Again, we have three, 45, it's the same data set. So an optional step would be arrange the number of data in the ascending order again, like we did for the median. Um, and we look for the number or the numbers that appear the most. Therefore, the mode is eight and 25. So eight and 25 appear the most. Again, it's not really telling us much about the data itself, but it's important to understand that this is what we mean. So probably out of those three, average or mean is probably the most important one. It's telling us more about the data than the other two. 
So we will be calculating the average in the virtual hide data. Something else though that's really important, so while measures of the central tendency, which we've just been discussing there, provide a single estimate that describes where the average is located, i.e. the central point of the data set, measures of variability provide further description of how the data are spread out from the central point or the average. So how much does that data change above or below that average number? And the three most common measures of variability are range, variance, and standard deviation. So look at these three things. Range is pretty simple. It's the difference between the largest and the smallest data values, and we call that the range. Therefore, it shows us a single number that represents how spread out your data is. So a simple example, we have the same data set we've been using before. The range is the difference between the largest and the smallest data values, and therefore it shows us a single number that represents how spread out your data is. So basically we take the maximum number and the minimum number in our, our variables there, which is 45 and 3. 45 take away 3 equals 42. Therefore we have a range of 42. That's fairly simple. Variance and standard deviation. So these don't sound as easy. Variance and standard deviation are often spoken about together. Before you can establish the standard deviation of a set of data, you need to find the variance. Variance and standard deviation are the most popular measures of variability because they are the most stable and are foundations for more advanced statistical analysis. So they're really important. And if we can work this one out and we can do this ourselves, fantastic. And we will do this with our, our bird data. So variance is the data value that represents how spread out the data is from the center. While the standard deviation of a set of data is the data value that represents how far from the average each data value is. So how do we calculate that? Well, we need to find the mean again of our data set. So we've already done that. We add all the variables up together, divide it by nine in this case, and we have 19.556. So that was the very first thing we looked at. So once we have our mean, we then have to do this. So it looks rather complicated, but it's just the way it is and standard deviation. And it kind of makes sense, we know the mean and we're trying to see how each one of our data points deviates from that mean. And this is how we do it. So you'd, you subtract the mean from every data value and square each one. Okay, and the advice here is I don't encourage you to manually calculate this. However, it's good to understand and visualize how the calculation is laid out. And it is of course quicker to use a calculator. So. It's important you guys see this. Um, this is what's happening under the bonnet, as it were. I always like to say to students, most people know how to drive a car, but they couldn't fix one or um, create one from scratch. You don't really need to know what's going on under the bonnet to drive the car. I certainly don't know what's going on under my bonnet, although I can drive a car. Um, I don't have a clue what's going on underneath it. So we're basically showing you underneath the bonnet just now. This is all the calculation that the computer can do for us, but it's important to understand the maths behind it. Basically, you can see here um, that we're taking the average away from every single one of our variables, okay? And then we're squaring it. So that's, if you have an idea in your head why we're doing the standard deviation, we're trying to see how much each one of these variables deviates from the mean here, okay? So it should make a little bit of sense when I describe it like that. So what happens when we do that? So we get all these large numbers here and then we add them all together and we get this number of 1624.221. Okay, so you may want to pause that and have a look. That's step three is adding them all together. Step four, we're assuming this is a sample data set. Therefore, to find the variance, divide the sum from step three by the total number of values or data we know from step one, which is nine, minus one. So that's really important, we minus one. For now, just know that we're looking for the variance of a sample data set, we must always minus one from the number of values slash data. Okay, so this might not be fairly obvious and I'm not going to go into why we do this, but it's just something you have to accept that if I had a, a sample size of 20, I would minus one and it'd be 19. If I had a sample size of 100, I'd minus one and I'd have 99. Okay, it's just a rule of thumb. And I will, I can explain this if, if we need to, but for the moment, I'd take the advice here, 
just know that if we're looking for variance of a sample data set, we must always minus one from the number of values in data. And this is related to something called degrees of freedom, but we're not going to worry about that too much at the moment, okay? So if, you can, if you're happy with that, if you can accept that we just need to minus one, then we can move forward. So we have our, our total value, 1,624.221, divided by nine minus one, which is eight, equals 203.028. Therefore, the variance is 203.028, okay? That's the variance. We still haven't, we've still got another step to do to get the standard deviation. Step number five, to find the standard deviation, calcul calculate the square root of the variance. So we take this number here and we square root it. Therefore, the standard deviation for this data set is 14.249. Okay, so some maths in there. We're never going to ask you, or I'm not in this, this video uh, mini lecture series, we're never going to ask you to do all these calculations. We've got lots of shortcuts that we can use, um, particularly in Excel, but it's good to understand that this is what Excel is doing. Um, we're just putting in a formula, but Excel is doing a loss calculation for us. Um, we'll, and we'll investigate um, some of these statistics in Excel in the next video. So, why is this important? Well, if we want to understand variation, we, we want to look at the coefficient of the variation as well. So this gives us a percentage at the end of it. And this will make more sense. I'll explain that better in a little second. But the coefficient of variation provides one way to interpret the relative magnitude of the standard deviation. I.e., is the data set more spread out compared to another data set? Does one set of data exhibit more variability than another data set. It is therefore the method of measuring the ratio of standard deviation of a data set to its mean. Okay, so statistics can't be overwhelming. There's a lot of new terms and it might not seem obvious what's happening here. But if I go back one slide and we look at standard deviation as 14.249, that's all well and good. We can calculate standard deviation, but what does that actually mean? Um, and alone, it doesn't really tell us much. So what we're saying here in the next slide is we can convert this again into something else. We can then compare how much a data set varies from another data set. So for example, how much does the magpie's variation differ from the galaz variation? Okay, so that's now uh, turning it into something a bit more meaningful for us. So how do we do that? Well, we can calculate our standard deviation, the coefficient of variation, the following way. Okay. So, it is only appropriate to use the standard deviation to compare the variability of data sets if the data sets have the same mean. If they do not, then the coefficient of variation is always used, as it is a measure of the relative variability. To find the coefficient of variation, we simply divide the standard deviation by the mean of the data set. The resulting value is then expressed in percentage. Okay, so we, we know the mean already for this data set and we've got the standard deviation, so 14.2. So we go back, 14.2. Okay, so we, we know how to calculate these things. Now all we're doing is dividing the standard deviation by that mean. And that's gonna give us a percentage. It's gonna give us 0 0.729. And if we times that by 100, it's going to give us a percentage, okay, 72.9%. Therefore, if we have that number for magpies, for example, and then we have an, that, the same number for, or we calculate the same number for galaz or a crested pigeon, we'll have different percentages. And that's something that could be interesting to talk about. Um, we'll discuss this when we're writing the report and when we go over the, the actual data set ourselves. But hopefully, if you need to rewatch this video, please go back and do so. But we're going to now use these statistics on the data that you guys have extracted from the virtual heights. So thanks again for listening. Please like, subscribe and follow. Um, follow us on Twitter uh, using the, the tags there at inspiring underscore eco or myself at Dr. Martin Hughes. Thank you very much.